Good evening, ladies and gents. It is Middle Age Gamer Guy, and we are back for another TNGC welcome. Uh, obviously, Tunes was in about 10 minutes before we even started the show, so welcome to the show, mate. Uh, and hello, Mia. How are you all doing? Hope you're having a great Tuesday. I'm a little bit worried that you've got 40k channel points. Um, you can't use them tonight because we always send the channel points off, luckily, but it does make me wonder what you're going to do tomorrow with them. So I, I can feel the tour coming on. I can feel the tour of the studio coming on, possibly. Who knows? We'll see. And I've got my sign working again. The one that uh, Captain Chris made me in the background. I've got it. Need a new batteries. Bless it. So I'm probably going to have to change batteries. There you go. Anyway, enough of me. Uh, if you've not been on the show before, welcome. Uh, we talk everything about uh, the latest games that have come out in the last seven days uh, and all the latest game news. Um, I have to say it's a very empty week for games this week. We are really scraping the barrel. Uh, but to help me scrape that barrel even further is my co-host, yet again, Mr. Dave Jones. How are you doing, Dave? I'm doing very well, mate. How about yourself? Very well. Good to see you. And uh, you know what question I'm going to ask you next, don't you? Oh, I do indeed, mate. Still plod along with Mass Effect and uh, Desperados <laughs> 3. I've been playing a couple of different things as well. I've been playing a lot of um, user-made campaigns in Half-Life Alex. I've been downloading yes. tons of those from Steam Workshop and playing through. There's some really good ones there. I've been having a great time with it. Blimey. You see, you're still ploughing through all this stuff, mate. I don't, I don't know how you'd, you get through most of it, but I don't know. I get through it slowly but surely. I mean, Mass yeah. Effect's been taking me months. I've still got a bit left to do on that. But I'm leaving that to the side of it because I was getting a bit bored of it. Played a bit too much. It was getting a bit saved. So I'm going to park you it for a week or two. Then come week, back to it. Hopefully it's going to get finished off. Okay. That's all yeah. good. Oh, hello to my wife. My wife's in the chat. Hello. <laughs> nice to see she tunes in. It's, it's good. It's nice. Cool. Make sure if you're a streamer, make sure you got your, if, especially if you're a guy, make sure you've got the support of your wife because if you haven't, you're in the shit. <laughs> uh, there you go. Waves back at me. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Love you um so let's crack on with the show after that romantic break and i'm not talking between me and dave obviously um let's get our guest in uh this our special guest um this evening oh i'm gonna have to bring that up in a minute um oh i did see uh, uh yeah do you know what before i bring my guest in i will answer that question i did see that team 17 have brought out overcooked all you can eat edition today i'm not going to talk about that game um which is annoying because if I'd known it had come out today, I'll probably have added it to it. So we'll probably drop it in the show next week. But there you go. But it's basically the two Overcooked games and all the DLCs come out. There you go. It's excellent. Buy it. That's my review done. Thank you very much. Um, we're bringing our guest in uh, tonight. Uh, he is the first person, if I've got this right, because I was speaking to when we had Governor and Hales on the show back in January. Can you believe that, Dave? That's how far that back Oh, was. time flies, mate. Oh, I can believe yeah. it. Wow. So we were talking and we were trying to work out with Gov who raided who first. And yes, he, I can see him. He's backstage and he's pointing and saying, yeah. And we did work it out. And it is right. And the person that raided us first to uh, our channel was Crusaders Coup, who is here. Hello. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> all right. I'm all right. How are you, my friends? I'm all good, man. I'm all good. And yeah, it was myself who, uh, was. who, who raided first. Uh, Struck gold. Thing, well, this is the thing you did, bless you. Um, I think we, Dave, weren't we playing Sea of Thieves when it happened? I think we were, weren't we? Was it getting we towards were. the end of the night, if I recall? Yeah, luckily, if you'd wait five more minutes, I think we would have logged off. Um, so, it, yeah, it, Mia, it is Ku's fault that you are here. That is officially. <laughs> uh, so. Mia would have found you. Mia would have found you. <laughs> would have happened. Um, but, um, yeah, it's cool because Gov was, Gov, I think, then raided a couple of days later. But then didn't realise that you'd already raided me, so he thought that he'd raided first, and then was like, "Damn it!" <laughs> Just like, so that's really random that that happened. Um, but no, it's all good. So it's all. So, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> thank, uh, firstly, thank you for being here. Uh, you've probably been one of my early first, like proper supporters. Oh, uh, yeah, man. I'd probably say so. First, I really appreciate that. Thank you for everything you, you, you've done for us. Um, but we managed to get you on the show. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk, anyone who's not familiar with you? Do you want to talk about your your what you stream and what you do, and a little bit about yourself and the games that you like? Yeah, uh, I'll keep it quick and simple. Um, Crusaders Coup by the name on Twitch, go by Coup for most people. Uh, I'm a streamer only recently, um, actually hitting a year soon enough, which is insane. But um, yeah, I play an array of games, mostly surrounding with 
playing games with my mates, but I do play a lot of story progressive games. So um, the likes of Mass Effect, which Dave was talking about there, is one of my favorite games of all time. I tried to stream that. People are not interested anymore. But um, it's it's those sort of games. I love, I love story uh, and really good story. And most of those would be more in the sense of the genre of horror, thriller, psychological. But I do hit the multiplayer games up as well with some mates. So I know you play quite a bit of horror, sort of. I know you said storyline, but there's quite a lot of storyline horror games. And again, uh, not going to lie, there was a couple of games that you played that went, oh, I've never tried that, so I'll give that a whirl. So piggyback. I I think you were ahead of me because I streamed Man of Medan, the first one, and you were doing Little Hope. Yeah. The recent one, which was cool. Yeah, um, I, I I was watching you progress through it because I wanted to see how you were feeling about it, knowing that soon at some point you're going to hit up Little Hope and do better than me. Because <laughs> <And laughs> uh, I effed that up. But um, yeah, it was I always love those sort of games because everyone has a different experience and that's why I love them. Like, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, Dave, Dave, you've played Little Hope, haven't you? Not Little Hope. I played Man of a Dan. Played that Dan. in co-op. Yeah. I was so close. I was going to say, oh, I bet they've got a different ending, but I, it, it, I found with the man of Medan, I mean, you say that I probably did. I don't, I don't think I got a good ending. I managed to save everyone, but they all ended up in locked in jail because I missed catching that one part that fell down the hole. And yeah. I reckon if I got that, it would have been a very different ending. Um, but I can't be bothered to go back and play it. No. <laughs> because you know what? If you go back those quick action um kind of scenes and everything like that where you flew through them first time second time you're going to muck them up and you're going to accidentally kill someone and then you're going to be like have to restart again yeah you know it's just going to keep happening trust me i've tried <laughs> yeah I, i've tried i think i'll save it at some point i'll get to little hope and mm. i will do that um just want to say thank you to pixie for the raid thank you hope your stream went well the fact that you you're on this time makes me think you finished early, but I hope it all went well. So all was all good. Uh, and and Mia also said I'm tempted to buy more bits, but I sent enough last week. That uh, Mia was one of the two guests last week, and Mia and Philip yeah. had uh, how many bit competition they could spend, and it just went insane. So there you go. Uh, thank That's you for giving. Um, yeah. Pixie, uh, <laughs> yeah, bless her. Uh, she, she didn't have to do that, but they they did, and they kept going. I said, just I don't know. Uh, oh, Twitch broke, so you're here now. Well, um, I don't know whether that's any consolation being here now, Pixie. But thank you for being here. You know, I appreciate the raid, but <laughs> you're probably better off being on on that. But there you go. Um, oh, oh, there you go. Me has just made you a promise, Key. You're next. No. No, Should thank you. <laughs> no, no. I I have this consistent kind of thing with her. Like I'm kind of like you do go buy yourself something nice go do something nice for you and everything like that i'm good like i'm, I'm just doing stupid stuff here <laughs> I, I, i'm gonna tell you you could try and argue with me but you will not win yeah. i tried a lot and it didn't work in fact it's very it's, it's very hard when i'm in a different country and only communicating via like a computer <laughs> it's very difficult to uh stop her in all fairness yeah. <laughs> oh dear uh, thank you, Mia. We do appreciate it, and that's that's very it's very kind what you do for us and all, all the support that you give us. So thank you. Right, gents, should we get on with the show? Should we make this happen? Go so, on, nice. I might as well. Uh, as I said, it is very slim pickings this week for new games, um, and luckily two of them are to do with one of the new stories we're talking about. Because if we didn't have them, we'd hardly have we'd only have about two games. Um, so. One of the new stories we will talk about a little bit later on, which we'll kind of close the show with, um, is the fact that uh, a lot of gaming companies have been doing their showcase events. And uh, last week was the... Oh, bloody hell, Mia's done it already. Thank you, Mia, for the 245 car call goes. You're going to have to let Nightbot banner. It's the only way you stop it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. It got got so bad that Nightbot started banning them from paying. It was hilarious. Like, when every time someone tried to... (laughs) do bits it banned them from the channel was it because of a spam yeah oh spam my god crazy so it just started banning people yeah uh That's nightbot right. is nightbot has not got the night off but nightbot has been told to behave tonight yeah, yeah. Just so you know um so yeah so uh last week it was the turn of uh square enix uh they apparently are going to do another one of these in august 
Um, but they've announced a couple of games, the big name games, and we're going to talk about them. But they're also doing some remakes and remasters. And two of them came out on the day of uh, the conference, which was uh, March the 18th last week. The first one is no exception. Uh, it's basically a reboot of a very beloved franchise. Um, and you get all three games. Uh, we'll talk about our feelings of these games because two of them I love. One of them I'm a bit about it. But for any of those people who might not have a clue what we're on about, um, this is, if I can find it, Tomb Raider, the Definitive Survivor Trilogy, which came out on Thursday. So I'm going to play the trailer. We'll have a look at it, discuss the uh, Tomb Raider reboot games. And then people in the chat, what I want you to think about is um, I scour the internet for all the reviews and ratings. So please have a think about while the trailer's playing, what score this got on average out of 10. And then we'll discuss it. Evening, Bards. How you doing? Here we go. Let's watch the uh, trailer for Tomb Raider Definitive Survivor Trilogy, and we will be right back after this. If I don't survive, none of us will. I've come so far. I'm not turning back. Get ready! What would you do? Well, apart from a very clunky trailer that didn't want to play, you get the gist. Yep. It happens, people. It's it's live, it's live Twitch. I would say live TV, but we're, we're not that famous. Um, so uh, yeah, basically, this is all three of the Tomb Raider games, starting with the Tomb Raider reboot from 2013, uh, and then Rise of the Tomb Raider and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, plus all the DLCs. And this has come out for Xbox One, uh, PS4, PS5, and Xbox Series S and X. Uh, Koo, I'll start with you. Have you played any of these? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. Uh, I mean, like, growing up, Tomb Raider was a huge game for me. Uh, like, the oh, I'm talking about the classic, like, PS2, like, huge games for me. So, um, when they were being, like, almost rebooted or that have refranchised in some ways, uh, I hopped on it straight away uh, with high hopes and expectations. And to be honest, they didn't fail me in any regard except maybe as the games went on i got a little bit meh about how they were going that seems to happen with most games that enter that kind of trilogy thing but um yeah they they were fantastic games i can't, I can't deny them all of them were really they were all above power level anyway so dave now i know you're a big fan of these as well uh but i think you're going to say the same thing as as q said so i want to hear what your thoughts are on these games yeah, again, I've played them all. Played all the DLC for them as well. Really enjoyed all of them. I'd say the second one's probably <clears throat> the high point of them for me. I think that was probably the, the best one for pacing and, and everything. The third one, whilst I still really enjoyed it, it I, I thought it had its issues when you got to like the, what they called their big hub area with the uh, yeah, like sort of Inca-type village. That sort of dragged it out a little bit. A lot, lot of the DLC, now you've got that it is like the main game that will drag it out even more because that's all set in that area all these like extra temples you can go to for challenges mm -hmm. so it would end up dragging it out still a, still a good game but wasn't the best one out of the trilogy mm -hmm. definitely the second one there very very highly rated in my mind that one yeah i i totally agree with you i thought the 2013 reboot was fantastic loved every minute of it i think rise of the tomb raider was even better um but then shadow of the tomb raider came with problems which probably makes it the weakest one and so much so that i didn't even get as far as you guys i completed the game and it's the only one that not the first tomb raider didn't really have much dlc anyway uh, it was the second one that had more story based but the third one i ain't even bothered with any of the dlc because mm -hmm. i was just glad to get it finished uh and i don't mean that a horrible way i just felt it had run its course and i 
as parts of her motivation in the third one where you just kind of question her, like, you know, like, I, I get in the first one, like, she never killed someone before, so she's fighting to su survive and that. But in the third one, she basically blows up a whole oil place and kills loads of employees that she had nothing to do with just because she's pissed off. And I'm a bit like... Yeah. Like they, I, I remember the third one. I actually was playing the game while streaming to some of my mates because they just wanted to watch it. Yeah. They didn't want to buy it. They just want to watch it because apparently they knew I was going to be uh, a little bit agitated with it. But when like the whole premises of the game, I think it was like she's suffering from like almost like um, the guilt of causing without causing any spoilers, but causing the reason the game is going. Then she goes and proceeds to commit genocide. <laughs> you know, like, um, <laughs> yeah. you want to save people, yet you're killing a load of people yeah, for and, having different ideologies. <laughs> and the weird thing is, like, the side, uh, Jonah, who's in all three mm. stories, is kind of going, This is crazy. You need to stop. You know? And it's like, Will you just bloody listen to him? Because he's the only one talking sense. And she completely ignores him. It's, it's crazy. Um, hello, Average, by the way. Hello, Erm. How you doing? uh yeah you're right Bard. she seemed to get over it pretty quickly uh it was like yeah mass genocide <laughs> but there you go um so a couple of people have been putting in the chat what they think obviously for those who just joined us we're talking about tomb raider the definitive edition which came out last thursday which is all three versions with all your dlc and all suits up um tune said interestingly enough He's never really been a fan. And he said, I'd give it a 6 out of 10, but imagine it'll get 7.5 or 8 out of 10. Uh, Mia said, in all fairness, I wasn't fully watching because I was making toast. <laughs> 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 Is that the toast getting 7.5? Yeah, yeah, wait. What happened to the toast? <laughs> yeah, what happened to the toast? That might got a higher score, so we'll have to see. Um, we'll have to see indeed. So um, what do we think? Dave, out of the whole trilogy, what do we think they scored out of 10 on the reviews when it came out? I'm That's going to try and try a nine for these. I thought they were really good games. Okay. Yeah. Um, Coop? Uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be a nine. I can't see it dropping below a line. All, all games were rated so highly. Bart is giving it a game for a 7.5. And the toast has nearly been eaten, but there was a slice burnt. We just have to confirm that, ladies and gentlemen. That's the uh, late okay. news from Toastgate coming to you live via satellite. <laughs> um, there you go. Well, I can tell you now, um, it got a solid eight out of ten if they broke it down into three this is what i find interesting if they broke it down into the three games the first one they would have given a nine out of ten the second one was kind of bouncing between an eight and a nine and the third one was bouncing between a six and a seven mm. i think that's what gave the average thing of, of an eight the third one kind of let it down it's a bit it down. Okay. yeah it's still a good game don't get me wrong but there's just things about it that are annoying and I think with that hub area as well in the third one, the yeah. fact that nearly everybody says the same bloody thing every time you talk to them just does my own. Oh, thanks for that. I needed that. Oh, thanks for that. I needed that. And when you've got to sell 25 items, it gets grating, to say the least. So there you go. So there you go. So that is the Tomb Raider Definitive uh, Survivor Trilogy. It came out on Thursday for Xbox One, uh, Xbox uh, Series X and S, PS4 and PS5. Gets an 8 out of 10. Uh, we'll talk about some more games and play some trailers, hopefully if they work, um, a little bit later on. But let's uh, talk about some news. So uh, a couple of news stories um, that have happened in the last week. So interestingly enough, um, everybody knows that uh, modders like to change games. And Grand Theft Auto V is no exception. However, Rockstar, for once, rather than going, oh, bloody hell, let's get rid of the, the people modding the game and ruin our game, has actually dished out ten thousand dollars to one particular modder because they have managed to save um cut down the loading time of the game um to down by 70 percent so which is insane so they basically took the code that is used are going to implement that in for gta 5 and online i think someone said that you can be waiting like on average, if you're on a good server, a couple of minutes, and they literally got it down to like a minute. Like you only have to wait a minute to get on. Um, because of that, they've awarded him ten thousand dollars, which is fine. Hello, Joran, you finally got out of the basement. That's good to know. 
I didn't leave a key, so I don't know who let you out, but there you go. Uh, good to see you. Um, I like the fact that Mia says, right, you kind of have my sort of full of attention. So there you go. There you go. So, and say hello to Gov for me. I didn't realise Gov was streaming tonight. Whoops. Sorry, Gov. Um, but there you go. Shit happens. Um, so, yeah, so uh, $10,000. I mean, obviously, they, they worked on this a lot um, to get this great. But do you think this is something that um, other game developers could make the most of? Like, if they do something that makes the game easier or far better for people, they should go, here you go, because they might even offer the people the job. I'll, I'll start with Dave on this one. I think this is quite a cool little thing that Rockstar have done. Yeah, it is cool. I mean, it gets to the point with games where you know, companies will probably sort of start to leave them alone, won't they, and start moving on to the projects where you spend much time with them. But then you've got all the players still playing the games. If they're stuck with like long loading times, they get a bit fed up, don't they? And yeah. in the case of GTA, I think, I think it was doing something silly. It was loading in loads of data to then do a comparison with to work out, I think, what items you had or something like that. It was some, cool. some checks to make sure you weren't trying to like sneak stuff in you didn't have. But it was just taking like, up to seven min minutes, I think, sometimes. So this guy's oh, gone in, figured out what it was doing, and you know, found a way to just make it load quicker, which obviously Rockstar hadn't considered or weren't going to bother with. Right. But after all the good press it's got, yeah, if they're putting it in, it's going to make it shit loads better, which is cool. See, Bard's just said there, he's remember waiting up to six minutes just to get on the server, which is pretty shocking. Yeah, yeah for these, these days, it's way too long, isn't it? A couple of yeah. minutes at most is more well, most people are willing to wait half the yeah. time. Uh, what do you what do you think about this, Coop? I think it's insane um, because, like, you, you think of like some of the games that kind of get ridiculed for that sort of thing. The likes of Anthem that could torn apart. Besides the fact that the, the game had no substance, but one of the biggest thing was the loading times for t between each thing. Like that, like again, much like what Barrett was saying there, like that that sort of game again took six to possibly ten minutes sometimes at worst. And it's the same with GTA. Obviously, people were a little bit more accepting of GTA because it came out that long ago or that that in that time period. But like, it's definitely a, a step forward because if an old game like that can get that slight touch, yes, even after all this time, then newer games don't really have that excuse anymore. But also, if people have been playing that game so regularly, which I can see definitely people doing like it's still a huge game on the likes of youtube for any sort of like entertainment purposes and mm. um, streaming purposes as well that's one thing that stops people is that as you said there the repetitive nature of having to go in wait play go in wait play like that i think may, that would attract people to run back to it because instead of like you could be on it for three hours but how much of those three hours was it you waiting you know, what I mean, like that, that's a, that's a thing. I think that's a really big thing. Um, but also like to reward someone like that, that's a, it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty big deal to just do that out of nowhere. Like when you sent on that to me, I was like, no way that happened. I was like, that did not happen. And then I looked it up. I was like, and that was insane. So it's a really cool thing on Rockstar's end to, Re to, to do that and reward in, in a sense mm. but also it's going to be great for them in a, in a marketing sense <laughs> like this that's going to get people running back to the game just to see if it's true yeah but also it's going to get old gamers who have possibly left to, to run back as well so it's a really cool thing they've done and um hopefully they keep doing that sort of thing rewarding very well yeah. and well, i think for the fact they said we i mean we talked about this on the show a couple of weeks ago is the fact they've already said it's coming to ps five and xbox series x so there's going to be longevity in it because we have no idea when gta 6 is going to be out we've got no inkling we know there is one because we had a guest on the show that's supposed to be featuring in it even though they've got <laughs> a lot of shit about it um but we'll we'll you know non-disclosure we'll, agreements boys you gotta keep <laughs> hey I, they didn't ask me to sign it so I don't no you, you got the scoop you got the scoop I got man the scoop, yeah <laughs> i think I got the scoop and he got the shit because I think yeah. he got the shit for it. But, but there you go. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's it's a it can only be a good thing. But it's it's good. Yeah, in in that respect. But also a very clever marketing ploy, as you said, yeah. to get more people in. So uh, there. Hello, Discord. He's lurking. Uh, <laughs> why can't you donate to Gov, Mia? That's an interesting thing. Uh, Erm's lurking as well. No worries, Erm. Um, so, 
Another thing which was interesting, kind of in the same sort of vein, um, a game that is generally meant for kids, generally, um, is uh, has turned out being the most uh, profitable, or, well, it's actually worth the most amount of money, more than the deal that Bethesda did with Microsoft the other week, which was only about, I say only, 7.8 billion. Only 7.8 billion. Yeah, only, only anything. Small chain, you know, um, is more worth than Ubisoft put together, um, and it's worth forty-five billion dollars. And that game, ladies and gentlemen, is Roblox. And I, when I saw this story, I was like, really? Like, I would have thought like Minecraft, but Roblox has become such a phenomenon that it is worth. 45 billion dollars uh and bards has just gone dear god no me <laughs> yeah um i know i know like i i i kind of get what the game is doing because it is a playground for creating i think a la minecraft but again you can make games and that but it's just become a huge massive uh success um do they do on if that if that's true i let Send me an article in the Discord and tell me. Do Microsoft want to buy Discord? It wouldn't bloody surprise. Oh, me. there was there was um, an article I saw on Eurogamer earlier. I think that's about ten billion, possibly. I think Microsoft and, and others are looking at it. So don't know who would end up buying it. Ten billion for oh. yeah. I don't know who works out how much these things are worth, but gross. How? Microsoft have got a shitload of money, haven't they? They've thrown the like seven job. points I think, billion at Bethesda, and they could throw ten million at this one. And, the, and you know that they're in talks with Ubisoft, but the Ubisoft talks are different. They're not going to buy Ubisoft. They're going to bring Ubisoft in like they've done with EA. So it's all free on Game Pass. And I'm just like, Xbox was selling balls for the last years compared to PlayStation. Where have they found the money? Now they're doing brilliantly. Like, I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm an Xbox fan anyway. Uh, I don't know why they just don't buy Sony. Just get it done with <laughs> <laughs> The new PSX box. <laughs> God, that would piss the PlayStation fans off, wouldn't it? Um, It'll happen at some stage. I'm, I'm going to call it. Like, I'll, I'll probably be in my deathbed, but it will happen. Oh, God. Can you imagine? It'll be that? that combo. I bet you, though, the only thing they won't buy is Sony Pictures because most of their films are trash. Emoji yeah. movie, anyone? No. Nah. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> there you go. That's another lawsuit against me. Um, <laughs> I, I, do you know what? I, I get to the point where I just don't care. I just slag things off on this, this thing. I just yeah. say it. So. It's my show. I can do what I want until freedom of speech, man. Until Twitch closes me down. Um, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, forty-five billion for Roblox. I honestly could not believe that. What What do you guys think? I'll start with Dave because I, I haven't even played the game, let alone. No, I've heard of it, but I've never played it because, in my eyes, it was just it was aimed at you know kids, really. Not saying yeah. that I'd be interested in it at all, but. From what you said, it sounds like it's it's quite cool if you can make your own games up in there and share it with your friends. Yeah, it sounds like it's quite a good platform. It's obviously just attracted loads of people in it. I bet probably loads since lockdown's been going on as well. It's probably had a yeah. big influx there. But, yeah. Well, fair play to them for starting it up from yeah scratch, and now it's worth forty five billion. Yeah, oh dear. So yeah, it's very like, very good. A lot of kids played it. Oh no, there you go. A lot. I mean, and that's all right. I knew what you meant. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's yeah, it, it's crazy. I mean, Coo, have you have you ever tried playing it or anything? Or? I do you know what? Um, I have once, and it it kind of shows the age and everything like that. That I was introduced to it, like I've heard of it, but I was introduced to playing it when um, uh, me half brother actually showed it to me. Right, and at first I thought it was Minecraft. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, but after for a little bit, it's like if you get Gmod and Minecraft and you put them together, it's it's pretty much the same basis of that. Um, I don't understand how. Uh, obviously the world has changed dramatically to the point that forty-five mil, right. um, can come in. You don't know toxic until it's. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to play it now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna... The, the language oh, kids use these days, eh? It's oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, do you know what? Like, you yeah. probably, probably get off more lightly playing on a Call of Duty Warzone server compared to playing that. You'll probably get more trash talk on Roblox 
now. I, I've seen so many like compilation videos of people's experience on Roblox because people also use Roblox for uh, the likes of VR. Um, oh. Without going onto VR, obviously, it's you can actually do that. You can talk to people on that. And uh, it can it can be the very same thing. Like you're meeting strangers, you're talking to them, and they're almost role playing a certain character when they're on it. But on it. the kids are also doing that, and like it's 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 really weird to hear a really squeaky voice telling me to sod off or like for 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 uh, like to them them saying something crude about me mother, like, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it, it I. I I think it's down to the popularity that I definitely think lockdown has come into it 100% mm. because I believe it's a free game. It is. Yeah. And yeah. it's cross platform. So there you go. Yeah. So like that's, that's, that, that's, I think that nowadays when it's free and cross platform, like you look at the likes of Fortnite and you look at any sort of game cross platform in general will make it millions mm. because it's out to a wider audience. There is none of this, um oh I've got, i gotta buy this i gotta buy that it's simply pull it up play it and the expansion of it is huge okay so but still 45 million no no i still don't, <laughs> no. I still don't get it i really don't but there you go um moving on to our next game we're going to talk about and hopefully playing a trailer that works <laughs> um Another game that was announced at uh, Square Enix Presents uh, last Thursday and literally landed on the same day. Um, a game that was very hyped, um, but basically fell short um, from certain reviews. However, we will talk a bit more about this because I've unveiled a load of stuff to try and make up for its short fallings. Uh, so on Thursday, uh, Marvel's Avengers came out for PS5 and Xbox uh, Series S and X. Gonna play the trailer. Um, let us know what you think in the uh, chat, and also try and figure out what sort of score this got um, overall. But we'll play the trailer and see what you think. And I just, for the life of me, hope this trailer works compared to the Tomb Raider one. So here we go. Its heroes outlawed. Evil eclipses hope. The only thing left is to fight back. War darkens the horizon. And it's going to take us all to stop Armageddon. Welcome to the end of the world. There you go. That is Marvel's Avengers. Uh, now, obviously, this is the new version that's come out. And the trailer works. I hope that worked for everyone. It seems to work my end this time. Fingers crossed. Um, for those who don't know, um, still a bit choppy, so it didn't work. Thanks, Dave. Uh, now I know. <laughs> okay. Never mind. Never mind. We try. It'll, technology. It's, it's having one of its days. It'll be fine. You get the gist of it. So Marvel's Avengers. Let's talk about it. It it didn't exactly set the world on fire. I I saw this at a show at 2019 that I went to. It was one of the few games that I walked on by. I don't know why. I'm a massive Marvel fan, but it just didn't grab me. And then started reading about it and it still didn't grab me. And then the game came out and everyone said, it's all right. Um, but what they did announce, uh, in fact, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about that because I'll, 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 I'll touch on that when we talk about the whole Square Enix presents, but basically what they've done is they've remastered the game, even though it's not even a year old, upgraded it for the new uh, things, chucked in some extra DLC, and there will be more content that we'll talk about because the biggest thing that they said is once you'd completed the main story game, it was empty after that. There was no real end game which was the same problem as, as, as Coop was talking about earlier with Anthem, except Anthem was a hell of a lot worse, let's face it, because they've shut the Anthem servers pretty much down now anyway, So, or they're not, they're not doing anything else with it, no more content, as we talked about a couple of weeks ago. So 
they are just going to try and make right with this. We also talked about on this show that it made a massive loss. I think we talked about this two months after uh, two months after it came out, Dave, didn't we? It made a huge loss on money, and it was nowhere near the predictions of what they were going to make. So they want to make good by this. Um, has any of you tried this game, or did you want to play it, but then saw the reviews originally? I'll start with uh, I'll start with Dave on this one. When I saw it, you know, initially in the trailers, I always thought it looked a bit average. I didn't think there's anything particularly special about it. Yeah, it's got the nice Avengers branding, but same as like every, a lot of other people, I always thought the characters didn't look particularly good. Mm. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people probably expect it to look more like, you know, the characters from the films, but it would have cost them a fortune to get the likenesses of, of any of those. So they obviously couldn't, so they did it in that style, but it just didn't look quite right. So they, they might have been better going with a slightly different visual style so that they could have, you know, gone with the different looking characters mm. and they've been more accepted by people, but it is what it is. Um, whenever I did see the story trailers for it, I always thought the story looked like it might be quite good. Yeah. So, but I was never interested in the whole live service side of it, not at all. I, I can't be bothered to play many of those games. They expect you to just grind and grind and grind to get mm. good stuff. And I'm not interested. I, if I play any of them, I usually just play until the end game and then leave it at that point. Don't bother yeah. going back. With this one, I've, I kind of am sort of tempted to give it a go. But it would have to drop down to like 20 quid or less in the sale for me to even bother with it. And then right. I would just play the story. And you know, if, if it was good enough and I finished it, then you know, get rid of the disc, yeah, yeah. eBay, it, get rid of it. But I, I don't think anything it's doing now really looks like it's going to save it. I think okay. people have made up their minds already. And it's taken a long time to bring out any like, additional stuff. And the first bits they're bringing out are Hawkeye, who isn't one of the most popular characters. They've got other stuff they are talking about further down the track, but that's delayed. It's going out later. I think yeah. people's, people are just going to you know, ignore it. Mm. Buy other stuff. There's better better games, better live service games out there. Yeah, it's it's interesting because they brought this Hawkeye DLC out. And it's funny because obviously Disney have also announced there is a Hawkeye TV show. And I, we, me and the wife are going through all the Marvel films from start to finish all the way up to, the, to what, then watch the new... Uh, Winter Soldier and Falcon TV show um, and I said oh it's funny how they never did a Hawkeye thing but they are doing a TV show and she just went that's because he's boring, he's the most boring character and I don't even think that's to do with the film just generally the people don't like him uh, which is a shame, I do, I don't mind him I think it's pretty cool to have eyesight that you can see that far away, it's pretty awesome I can, you know, but there you go but you're right, it's kind of a bit too little, too late and we will talk about their roadmap and their other things that they want to do a little bit later on. Um, Ku, what do you? What, oh, question for you first, actually, because Joran's asking, what yeah. is on the wall behind you? Uh, there's a there's an array of things there. So above, where in between the neon lights, there's Crusaders Noon, which is the name I originally went by. It's my actual name re uh, reorganized into Crusaders Noon, uh, and then above that is a clan that me and my mates are a part of called Irish Wolfhounds and actually Barrett is a part of it he's one of the members of it but it's done by a friend of ours who is done in pyography so it's a plank of wood bit of fire and he designs it using a fire pen like uh, and then the other two things is a poster I got uh, as a gift a predator poster it's still in its packaging it was gotten at a convention I'm not touching it and then a fallout new vegas um vault situation and then a map <laughs> of the world <laughs> i saw that i was like what the most interesting things are the things behind me that's what that's what's happening <laughs> <laughs> there you go um what's your opinions on the whole avengers thing do you... <sighs> <laughs> i have to be i have to be somewhat unbiased here um no Basically, I was actually excited for it because when that was getting hyped out, we we got Spider Man, you know, yeah. and obviously after the success that game had, it was always going to be compared. That's the one thing I will say. It was always going to be compared to such a, such a game like that, and obviously that game was uh, brilliant. It was from start to finish, it was fantastic. But much like what Dave kind of said, I was never actually convinced by anything they were showing us before the game actually came out like the trailer looked okay but i questioned the design of some of the characters 
Uh, obviously, they tried to bring in the roots of the comics and the retro shows as well. And I was like, okay, look, we'll, we'll be okay with that for now. But like, even the look of it seemed a bit choppy to me. And they put more effort into some areas than others. And I still said I'd give it a shot. I wouldn't buy it. But one of my mates said that he had it. And uh, basically, he was just like, you can play it if you want. And yeah. let me know what you think of it because he wanted me to play it for a little bit first before he got to play it. <laughs> Worst thing he ever did because he bought it and I played, I couldn't finish it. Right. It was, it was just, uh, it was like watching paint dry. It was so repetitive. Uh, unfortunately, at first, awesome, kind of cool aspect. I get to play alongside these heroes that we kind of grew up and love. Like, I'm I'm a, I'm a Marvel fan as well. More DC, though, I will admit that, so I might be a bit biased again. But um, it, it, was, it was still this thing of, like, okay, I'll play it. The missions are incredibly repetitive. It's either destroy this object or defend this object. Right. Consistently. And I thought maybe it was just me. Maybe I was just being a little bit pessimistic about it. Um, but reviews that came out after I, I looked at the reviews after I play games said the exact same thing. It was quite repetitive, but like, and it was almost unfulfilling. And much like Anthem, the story was kind of not really there. Like it was hinted now and again, but it was it wasn't grappling, it wasn't taking me. And as I said at the start, like I'm a very story-driven gamer. I love story and I'm really critical of it and it was not grabbing me whatsoever. Um, so I hope this um, reboot of it or remastered of it can do a bit better. I don't think it can save it though. Mm. I think it's on the same track as Anthem. It pushed too far with too little and it, it, it it's it, in, 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 in regards to the, like pricing, I, I think I have to again agree with Dave. I wouldn't pay more than twenty, I, like even less. Like again, I didn't want to buy it when it was full price and it was hyped. My mate had to give it to me, um, and even then, I couldn't finish it. Like I got it for free, and I didn't want to finish it, you know. Um, so I, I I can't see it doing very well. I think the ship has sailed and it's sunk. <laughs> Uh, I, I sound so bad and so pessimistic yeah. about it, but <laughs> nah, I think you're right. I think I think they should have just left it as a, a good, solid single-player action adventure game. Stuff off all the live service crap that it didn't. Yeah. Need. Oh, when you said about live... right in the missions, then yeah, one hundred percent. When you got. as soon as you were talking about live service, man, my my memories came back, and I was like, oh sweet Christ, they were so <laughs> annoying. Everything was so annoying. Like I don't think I even got halfway through the game. <laughs> like it was. <laughs> It's unfortunate. I had a lot of hopes because I think all of us want a really good hero game. We got it with Spider Man. Mm -hmm. We want them more. We want them all. Like you know, I think the closest thing we kind of got to hero games prior to the Spider Man, if like that, you could, I guess, you could say is like the likes of uh, Injustice in that Mortal Kombat kind of fighting yeah. style with the story and that. And the story was better in that. Yeah. You know. <laughs> That's just so me I, though. <laughs> I I literally. Uh, streamed Injustice 2 last Saturday for the first time. I've never played it and I mm. really enjoyed the story. I got halfway yeah. through the campaign in the stream and I was like, this is really cool. Um, but I, again, I mean, you're very kind to say that you might pay less than £20. If I, if I get a copy, I'd expect it for free. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the only way I would play this, um, unfortunately. But um, I'll just I'll go back to some of the comments. It's funny because obviously Bards were saying, it's weird looking at the character models, especially after Endgame it dropped around about the same time, which is right. Um, and then again, I mean, I'm streaming Guardians of the Galaxy at the moment on Saturday nights, the game. Uh, and Tune says, oh, I'm enjoying your playthrough of Guardians of the Galaxy. I can't take any Marvel except your game seriously unless it's set in Lego. I think the Lego games have probably got it got it down to T. So score-wise, uh, Duron's giving it a 6 out of 10. Bard's giving it a 6 out of 10. Mir's giving it a 6 out of 10. Um it actually got 7 out of 10, which is pretty much what it got when it came out. They just said the only added bonus is you get two extra DLCs with it, and that's it. There are more DC, uh, D D DCLs, DLCs on the way, uh, and again, we will talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, so there, there you go, folks. That is Marvel's Avengers.
Play it if you dare. Came out last Thursday for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, and it is on other consoles if you can be asked to play it. So there you go. Um, some more news stories. Um, moving on to PlayStation. I don't think I actually put this in the notes, which is stupid of me. So you guys are going to be on a whim here uh, with this. Um, PlayStation have been kind of trying to give games away for free during lockdown. Um, they gave away some games such as uh, Ratchet and Clank uh, and a few others. They've just announced 10 free um, indie games. Uh, PlayStation don't really do a lot with indie games that much, but they've decided to give away, and some of them that are coming out, um, Subnautica, uh, Enter the Gungeon, uh, and The Witness. Uh, I think I've played all three of them. I wasn't that much of a fan of Subnautica, but Enter the Gungeon's good fun, and The Witness is a great puzzler. But they've also announced that um, they're bringing some free VR games uh, two of them being uh, a different version on Astro's Playroom. There's an Astro's VR game. And also Moss, which I think came out about two years ago, where you play a little mouse and you guide it around this tree thing. It's a that's really, a really good game. Yeah, that's really cool. I've seen that. And they've announced um, that Horizon Zero Dawn will be completely free as well in the next couple of weeks. Um, so, I mean... Again, I'm not really qualified to talk about anything PlayStation because I'm an Xbox fanboy. Um, do you think this, firstly, do you think this is a good move by PlayStation? Secondly, do you think they should be shouting more about that? Because it's only in the last week have I started seeing trailers for some of these games that actually are coming off at the end of this month. And I was thinking, why aren't people hearing about this? Like when you started putting these games out like for free uh, a while ago? Because some of the other games like Ratchet and Clank have been free for quite a while, so um, I'll start with you, Ku. What What do you think about this? Um, I've t like again, I've I'm, I've only gotten really into PlayStation after years of being away from it. Like I, like yourself, I've been a pretty much a dedicated Xbox fanboy up until I got the computer. <laughs> but like I do, I do have a PlayStation um, in my room and everything uh, in the setup as well. Like, but. I think it's them kind of trying to combat the recent, I guess you could say, resurgence of Xbox or of Microsoft doing what they're doing. I really do think they're trying to do all this and that. But the one thing I actually remember hearing now, it, it benefited me greatly, but my mates and others who I've chatted to like via streams and everything like that weren't too happy when Horizon Zero Dawn was free after they just purchased it out of nowhere and how it just came to pc and it's just kind of like these games we've bought from you before and without like any sort of notice boom free and it got a lot of from what i've heard it, it's gotten a lot of lack like it's gotten a lot of negative responses because these are games that you've paid a lot of money for and they're still quite highly rated and then out of nowhere it's free fantastic for those like myself who didn't have it didn't get to play it but for those who have it or just recently got it with its recent resurgence because of the likes of horizon zero dawn 2 coming out and everything it's a really risky move um because you're gonna get obviously no matter what you do you're gonna get negatives but there's a lot more negatives and there is positives coming from it mm. That's you know? but um I think it's a I think it's a good move to start now in in its long run people will like appreciate it a lot more that's the one thing I always had over my PS mates when I was growing up with the Xbox is that like I get free games you know what I mean and like uh, I don't I I know at some point this game is going to become free with PlayStation they never really kind of done that mm. um and obviously they're looking to bring that in now which is fantastic with the likes of um uh PlayStation Plus and everything but I think it again it's it's gonna have a lot more trouble for, at first before it gets looked at as a positive. Hmm. Okay, Dave, your thoughts on it? I think you're always gonna end up upsetting some people, aren't you? When you make something free that's popular, because there's always gonna be someone who's brought it, you know, a day or a week, whatever, just before it goes free. I mean, I, I brought that game a couple of years ago, so I, I played it, finished it ages ago, so it doesn't bother me that it's suddenly gone free. Hmm. But it's just they're just gonna keep doing it because they upset loads of people back in. I think it was February, wasn't it, when Control Ultimate Edition, PS5 version, was thrown to PS Plus. 
I wish yeah. I'd friggin' known because I brought it bloody Christmas in the sale. So I could have saved myself like 15 quid. <laughs> but it's it's the risks you take, isn't it? You, know, you see it, you buy it. It may be free later on. It, it just depends how patient you are. If you want to wait, you could be waiting a long time or you'll, maybe not. Don't know. That, I, I think that's the thing. It is always a gamble. I, I think the only time I've kind of gone, damn it. Um, I mean, it didn't even bother me when Doom Eternal came to Game Pass for free. Because I'd already had it for six months because I got it on day release and I played it through, completed it. I was like, eh, cool, didn't bother me. But the one that did bother me was going back to Xbox 360 where I bought two games in a sale. One was full enough Tomb Raider, the 2013 version, and the other was Bioshock Infinite. And the next week, both of them were the free games of gold for that month. And I was like, bastard. Because I was just like, if I'd known that, I wouldn't have bought them. I wanted those games. But I think that's the only time I felt hard done by. Because I was like, you put them in a sale, I've gone and bought them, and the next week they're free. But, yeah, it's a bit of a – it's one of them, isn't it? You set the rough with the smooth, I guess. <laughs> that's uh, You can either wait and eventually, yeah, it might come on. Yeah. Not all the time. Not every title makes it there. But, you know, Among wait, wait six months, a year, sometimes longer. They yeah. might well pop up. Depends yeah. how patient you are sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Like again, like as I said, like I was really appreciative of that. It's free. You know, like I, I'm not gonna lie, like I was like, yep. <laughs> I'm yeah. there. Because uh I played the long game, you know what I mean? Uh, obviously, but I was waiting for it to come to uh PC because I really wanted to experience it on PC rather than PlayStation. Um because uh, like I feel it's that sort of game that would um be very like I would I would prefer on a play uh, on a PC than a PlayStation. But um I like again. I'm, I'm the positive aspect here that I'm kind of like, I, I'm happy I got a free game, you know? But um, yeah, it is pretty much just, just a gamble. Flip of the coin every time in, a game is on sale. That, uh, that has happened to me a lot, though. I bought a game on sale, and the next time, it's or the next week, it's either gone down to basically nothing or it's free. And you can talk to the likes of uh, Amirizu, who's always in my streams, yes. or like... Um, even uh, Otami Games, yeah. Uh, the amount of times they'd get a game for free, I joined the chat with them, and I literally curse me lungs out, giving out to them as if it's their fault. <laughs> <laughs> because like I just spent like sixty quid on two games there the other day, and you're getting them for bloody free, you know. But look, it's it's the it's the look of the draw, you yeah. know. <laughs> so how could you do this to me? How? Mm. Well, I'd literally be right. cursing them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, Sony, it's official. You're off the hook. The other streamers yeah. are going to get it in the neck because he's just going to go after them. So, yeah. that's cool. I better not play it. You want to buy then? Jesus. Their, their blood is on their hands now, Sony's hands, you know. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as lockdown's over, I'm head hunting. <laughs> <laughs> You've been warned, lads. You've been warned. Yeah, yeah they know. Tune oh, yeah. <laughs> um, said the only advantage Sony has over Microsoft is the fact that Fall Guys... But well, that's coming to Xbox this summer. Yeah, it was announced just before Christmas or just after Christmas. So I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to streaming that. Um, it is good. I've just started Series 4 of that. That came okay. out yesterday. So a new sort of 80s sci-fi theme to some of the levels. It's a short yeah. circuit track or something I read about where it's like a circuit board or something. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's like the first one I don't really got a couple of laps of anything. It's yeah. Like a, a little race. It's quite good. Yeah. I, I, I want to give that a go. I, I, I could see me putting that in easily as one of the choices for the VIP stream, because I think that will be hilarious to play. Oh, and that. Since they've been brought by Epic, they hope be able to start doing cross-play as well, because yeah. I haven't done that in this game yet. Mm. So I'm looking, I'm looking forward to that. There you go. We'll give some PlayStation the owners a, you know. Uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah. There will be a VIP win for sure. It definitely will be. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Uh, right, well, we're going to move on to a completely different uh, plot. Oh, no, actually, I was going to talk about something else, actually, before I do that. Blimey, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, me, I noticed me is lurking, and it's probably a good thing, because unfortunately, we are going to talk about that game that we've managed not to talk about for a couple of weeks, Dave. Oh, her favourite game. That favourite game, Cyberpunk. Oh, <laughs> Mia loves it. She does. Me I don't it. know if that's sarcasm or like. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, 
uh, put it this way: we 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 stream Cyberpunk every Monday, and Mia's first words were yesterday. I've only come on the stream to wish your dog happy birthday, and then I am out of it. <laughs> I am not watching this this game. She did say for most of the stream, though. Um, yeah, there, you go. there you go. There you go. But yeah, she can't stand it. Can't stand it. And I know it rubs a lot of people up the wrong way. Some people love it. I I, I have gained followers because I am one of the very few people actually streaming it. And it was pointed out to me uh, yesterday by one, one of the people who are here today that there was only 873 people watching Cyberpunk streams yesterday, which shows you how low that is compared to any other games on Twitch. So, um, but it may, you know, it's one of them. However, they came out CD project red about time. We've been waiting for the February update and we all know that the February update wasn't going to happen. And they said, right, you're going to get a March update instead. And then the March update is going to be the April update. And they did something kind of cool, kind of cool. They released an announcement like one of their TV shows in the games to say what is actually in the update. Um, some of this included the fact that uh, the police have been sorted out in the game. If anyone's played it, the police are shocking. You can run people over, drive people in the cars, and the police do nothing. Yet sometimes you could be standing there minding your own business and the police come through a wall, like a stuck in a wall, and gun you to death immediately. There's just no sense in it. So they did a whole That's thing. Dublin. Yeah, it's just <laughs> That's it's what happens just, here in Dublin, like. <laughs> Hello, it's just like but oh, I don't I know. Maybe they took a leaf out of that bit. I but I yeah, don't know. Uh it's they've they've said they did it in a news report and said, Oh, there's been reports, an eyewitness said that there's been too many drive bys in this and that, and the police are staying. And they did it in this funny sort of talk thing, um, which is kind of cool, but at the same time, my reaction was just fucking tell me what is in this update. Because I had to go through pages and pages of these bloody news reels. Uh, and in the end, it just came down to the sorting out the police mechanic, the sorting out the car mechanic. So you're not every time you take the corner, you're not going to go slamming into a, a side thing. Um, and the fact they're adding a few other little bits and pieces, which doesn't seem a lot for the fact we have been waiting nearly two months since the last update. Um, so the question remains that it's great they've announced this but we still don't have a date and the end of the month is a week tomorrow so when's it coming out cd project red when we want to know and why don't you just say we're doing this 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 and then this they have said the reason it's got delayed is the fact they got hacked last month which again we talked all about that um which set them back because they got a load of their coding hacked but dave do we really give a shit anymore? Should I just get on with it and fix this bloody game? Yeah, I'd love to just see a date and it's coming out. I'm still hoping we're going to see something before the end of the month, as you say, that is fast approaching. And yeah, there is, was it three little videos they released last week showing those yeah. little bits, which look fairly unexciting, to be quite honest. But I'm kind of getting the impression that this, the 1.2 fix, it really isn't, it's not going to add anything new. It's going to, you know, you know, settle the whole thing on a decent baseline, probably, to then build from that point from a stable setting for the future. Because yeah, the whole the whole thing's a, a mess, isn't it? Loads, and loads of bugs. So you've got to sort all that out first before you can even think about adding more things. I to that don't game. know why they're trying to add stuff when they last yeah. night alone. I had about fifteen minutes where there was a gun that I decided not to pick up. You know, you have the little box that tells you what the gun is and its stats. I didn't want that gun, yet that <laughs> box stayed there for 15 minutes in the game, and I could not get rid of it, no matter what I did. And I had to go completely exit the game and reboot it to get rid of that bloody thing. And that's happened to me a couple of times. It's still got the fact that you can just be walking down the street and you'll die instantly for no reason what's happened. That's happened many a time to me. Um, I think I've never had that one. I've had the, had the one where things got stuck on the screen. I told you yeah. about the trick I did the other week where I, I couldn't win one of the fights against a person. So before you yeah. start the fight, you could just drop a knife on the floor, start the fight, which means we fist only, and you could just pick the knife up again and just stab the fucker. I That's tried that. Couldn't, couldn't, couldn't do it. <laughs> it didn't work for you. I worked no. fine for me on PC. I still can't beat that guy over. That's really annoying. <laughs> it was a pain. That's the best way to do it. Yeah. Tried it. Tried it many times. I know you've been kind of holding off 
on this because I know you, yeah. you said to me, I don't want, I don't really want to know any spoilers. Trust me, I get it. I, I get it. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I was uh, like many people, I was waiting for this game for so long that I ended up just finally getting around to playing it with bugs and all. Um, yeah. It, <laughs> it is what it is, really. That's that's the mad thing we can we can only say about it is like it's actually come to this point, it is like it is what it is. Yeah. Will it get fixed to the point of it running smoothly? There for, for the company itself, like for, for project, it's insane because most of their games have always come out with bugs, but yeah. they've been really quick. Like maximum, I think I remember with The Witcher Tree had a lot of problems, and it took about six months, if I'm mm. correct. Now I think they're still in that time frame from what when they promise like fixes. But the thing about it is their time frame is consistently expanding, as you said there, because they're not yeah. giving a date. And I think that's them trying to save their their asses, to be honest, because they've realized now with the other few times they've promised things, people have been on their case. Like they've been yeah. leading They're They're literally almost like um, lurking, waiting for the, these updates to pop up on their screen, on their steam, on their Xbox and everything like that. Um, but not, it's nothing that will make the game like um, without its issues. Like uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I've experienced all of what you said. <laughs> Uh, I will have to try the knife situation. <laughs> That's a smart move. Let me know if it uh, works. I had no joy with that. So if you do, yeah. Well, I'm I'm hoping because uh, Dave, you were saying you were playing on the PC, yeah. Yep, that's right. Yeah, I'm, mate. I'm I'm hoping it, it stays that way for myself then. But um, I've had that issue <laughs> multiple times, and uh, I remember when I like I got the game, like everyone, I pre-ordered it for mo for many people actually. Sorry, and. It was one of the games I was really excited about. I'm a huge fan of The Witcher and everything like that. So, and like the company. So, I automatically had huge hopes because I'm a huge fan of all, all things cyberpunk as well. Like, I love it. Um, so, I was like, oh, damn, I can't, like, this is going to be amazing. So, I was like, no, I can't, I can't hold this in. I'm going to want to stream this because I want people to see how childish I'm going to be. I'm going to be squeaking like a little child because of what's here because I had huge expectations like everyone else. And that stream bombed after 45 minutes because the 45 minutes was spent admittedly 20 minutes on me customizing. Uh, <laughs> but also, <laughs> admittedly, but the other 20 minutes was consistently it crashing as soon I chose the um, the street rat or the street cred um, yeah. one. And as soon as I left the bar and got in the car, with i forget your man's name but one of your old associates his yeah. mouth wouldn't move when he was speaking to me and his face was as if it was a watercolor painting like almost <laughs> dripping um almost like roblox actually when you think about it <laughs> um it's it, it, it all connects um and then as soon as he said the line um so what have you been up to crash damn okay five times in a row crash i at that point i knew this game is not going to work right now and i looked into everything i thought i was using the excuse that maybe it's my setup because at that time it was my old pc yeah. and everything like that i was giving everything possible and i said i'm going to give it a week because i don't want to play the game off stream and then absolutely lose my mind but unfortunately obviously i gave in got the new pc played it and haven't finished it it's hard to get back into due to the fact that again the enjoyment's been taken out with it. It's so many issues, um, and I don't think fixing police officers and like their their protocols on what is legal and illegal in the sense of running over citizens. I think that's very cyberpunk in my opinion, <laughs> but um, I don't think that's going to change absolutely anything. Yeah, uh, they need to change. There is one guy. I don't know. If, I've got this on Xbox. I've sent drive past him many a time. There's one guy, there's this big fat guy, and he just stands in the middle of the street in one part, and he's always there. And if you hit him, it's it just knackers your car. Like, it doesn't destroy it because the cars don't get any damage, but it yeah. just knocks your car out. Uh, and I'm like, fix the fat bloke in the middle of the road first <laughs> before telling me I'm actually going to get police chases because I, I just don't care about that. It's, it's a shame. It's been four months now, and I've streamed that nearly up 50 15 weeks i've been streaming that now i'm very lucky i've had, never had 
a major failure with the game. I've had audio failures. I've had bits where it wouldn't let me save the game. So we had the three hour stream that ended up being four hours because it constantly wouldn't let me save. There was a glitch and I couldn't save it. So we had to do another hour, um, which was crazy. Um, and I've had other little things like falling through the floor uh, and other things. And I, I did actually see one of the little red boxes, you know, that says thingy not finished, artwork not finished. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I haven't spotted I've not that. seen any of them until literally, I think it was two weeks ago, there was a woman walking, walking down the road and she was walking one of those boxes. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, but I didn't, I didn't oh, get nice. to it quick enough to capture the footage because, like everything, they've decreased the amount of people in the street and the amount of traffic, so it disappeared like that. Mm. And I think that's one thing they have said they are fixing because I've constantly seen traffic in the distance, and when you get near it, it all disappears and you're just on empty roads. And apparently that is one thing they're going to fix. So the roads are going to be much busier because, you know, like at rush hour in the middle of the city, there's three cars. And you're like, what? This makes no sense. Like, but, you know, we'll see. Please get it sorted, CD Projekt Red. And please concentrate on things that are important. Please. Please. You probably don't give a fuck, but there we go. We'll see. Right. We're going to talk more new games. Uh, so this is an actual new game. Um but it's for Nintendo Switch, for right? all you people that love playing your Switches. Um, this is, again, a game that is part of a number of games that have come out over a number of years. Um, if you think of a very sort of farming-style simulator slash Animal Crossing, um, that's what you'll get with this next game. This is Story of Seasons, uh, called, and it's uh, part, sorry, part of the Story of Seasons games, but this one is called Pioneers of Olive Town. Here's the trailer. Uh, let us know what you think in the chat. And uh, guess what? This got scored when this came out also last Thursday. Here we go. There we go. So that is uh, Story of Seasons, the Pioneers of Olive Town. Um, basically, think of Animal Crossing before Animal Crossing was a thing, but with no, the only animals that own it are animals at your farm because you play human. That's the best way to describe this. Oh, and the fact that, like most of these Nintendo games that me and Dave have talked about, there's a bit of a dating simulator thrown in for good measure because what's a farming game these days without dating simulators? Oh, it mixes it up, doesn't it? Yeah. Shame you can't date the animals. That would probably make it more interesting. Um, but we won't go there. Um, you get a different demographic for that now, I see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> demographic. Um, Tunes just said, so it's like The Sims mixed with Animal Crossing. It's probably like that. Now, funny story. I know Ku loves The Sims so oh, much. Yeah. Mm. So much. Let's let's talk about what happened with that before we go. Uh, um, Ku, Ku decided <laughs> to run a bet. Um, I wasn't oh, about I heard it. about that. Yeah. And um, he said, if I don't get this many views on TikTok, uh, if I'm sorry, let me get that correct. 
if I get over a thousand views on this TikTok video, then I will do a series of Sims games. Now, if I were you, mate, I would have just said I would played it once, but you then went and said I will do a ten part series. Why ten? Why? Oh man, I thought. Look, I underestimated the power of my followers, <laughs> and I overestimated the strictness of the TikTok algorithm. Um. I regret it heavily, um, <laughs> but like, so like I'm I'm thinking of like some uh, six in particular. Really, I I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna break the PG parry here. Really fucked me over. <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> fucked me here. I'm looking at Mia, uh, Gov, Hailstorm, um, Bards, bloody Bards, yeah. um. Like obviously they had their own followings and everything like that, yeah. and they but they were playing it over and over and then sharing it to other people oh, to man. share it and purposely say please share this because we want to screw this guy over. That is literally what they were like saying. <laughs> because I have this massive hatred for Sims, <laughs> this massive hatred. I've never played it, don't want to play it, but I'm gonna have to now. Um, yeah. but yeah, like it's it's fair. Do you know what? Fair play to them. I had my hopes that TikTok would be like, no, no, this, this is not over a thousand people viewing this. This is the same six people playing this over and over again. Obviously, they didn't care because TikTok won the fucking <laughs> two. Um, but yeah, like, it, you know what? Fair play to everyone who actually did do it. Uh, I've been questioned a lot as to why I hate The Sims. And when it's, it's happening this Friday, so when it happens, you'll understand. It's just going to be me being sour throughout the whole thing or like... <laughs> It's <laughs> it's so bad. But um yeah, I was really cocky. I'm not gonna lie, I was really cocky. I was just like it's not gonna happen. I was like look, like I am I'm an Irish lad. Social media in Ireland is not that big unless you're a sports athlete or a model or anything like that. Like gaming in Ireland is still really, really low down on the pecking yeah. order. So I was just like and I've always been bad with social media, like no one cares about social media when it comes to me and like i don't promote myself or anything like that so that's why i was really really cocky and um i'll end it with fuck hails fuck golf fuck bards <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck the lot of his like uh my, my my missus um was the one who suggested it and i had a serious talk with her after I was just like, you want to keep this going, yeah? <laughs> mm, we're going to have to have a little talk. Nah, but uh, it's going to happen. We'll see what happens with it. I regret 10 episode series. I was way too cocky. I will never underestimate them ever again. <laughs> I, I, I did say I quite happily will do a co-stream with you on yeah, your please. Week. Just so you know that you're halfway there, and I, I yeah. still stand with that. We'll, we'll talk about that another time. One hundred percent, please. Because uh, you've probably been through hell and back by the time you've got to episode five. So, yeah, we'll, 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 oh, we'll man. try and ease some of that burden. Do you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the main menu, and if I had to calm down there, if I hear the same generic type of music in those sort of games pop up at that main menu, I'm actually gonna lose me shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually gonna lose it, man. But uh look, we'll see what happens. We'll see. Okay. Did, did you specify how long each of your ten episodes will be? Because if you didn't, uh, just make I, it five I, minutes each. That's it. That's what I'm pulling. <laughs> that's what Good I'm man. pulling. I was joking, saying like, here, I'm gonna do five minutes and everything like that. But um I'll do them good. I'll do I'll do a minimum of thirty minutes. Um, and you know, what? I think thirty minutes will be far too long for me anyway. But we'll see what happens. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. Well, so leading straight on from that, <laughs> oh, story of seasons then. You must really want to play this game. I do you know what? It actually doesn't look too bad. <laughs> it actually doesn't look too bad. You know, like because like I, I looked at it and I was like Animal Crossing, but then I yeah. saw the marriage and the baby thing, and I was like, this yeah. is fucking Sims. <laughs> but um no, it doesn't look too bad. Like I've I played those sort of games before. Um so yeah, I'm, I'm actually okay with it. <laughs> uh, Dave, what do you think? It looks all right, I guess. I mean, if you like, yeah, as you said, The Sims, Animal Crossing, I was compare it to. If you like those, looks like the sort of thing you probably get something out of. For me, it'd be a hard pass. I can't say I'm interested in the slightest. Wouldn't bother. Okay. 
Um, Tune says, again, not my thing. Probably gets a 7 out of 10. Ku, what do you reckon this, this got when the reviews you, came out? Do you know what? My be- my my head is going like three. Oh wow! Because okay. of the type of game it is, but I know that's not true. This sort of game is massively type, ty- massively popular. It's big into like so many different demographics and different groups and everything like that. I think I'd have to go. I would, I would have to go with like a seven or eight. Yeah. Okay. Cool, Dave. What do you think? Yeah, as you say, it's part of a series, so it must be pretty popular. It's been going this long. I'll, I'll guess an eight for this one. Okay. Um, we've seen some other games come out this year that are very similar to this, but they've said this is one of the better ones, and it gets a solid 7 out of 10. So it's decent. If you like that sort of stuff, if you love Animal Crossing, I'm sure you would love this. It adds different things that Animal Crossing doesn't do, but there's a lot of stuff that's familiar. So go check that out. That's out on Nintendo Switch and came out last Thursday. A um, couple more news stories we're going to talk about. Um, the first one is a very intriguing one. Um on social media, allegedly, we have to say, um, Wednesday next week might not only be the day that that bloody cyberpunk thing comes out, but I'm not holding the breath, <laughs> but it's claimed that Mario will die. And the reason behind this is Nintendo have announced that a lot of the games that are on the Nintendo store um, are being taken off, especially some that were for, like, the Nintendo Wii. Um, There is quite a few games disappearing. There is no announcements why they're doing this. There's no announcements what's going to replace this. And then also saying that certain things like uh, the original Mario Maker, the servers are going to be taken down as well. So if you have got some of these games already, some of them might not work as how they should. Um, A campaign started saying that, Obviously, there was this big whole year long thing about Mario's birthday. So now they're saying that March the 31st is the day that Mario dies, which is a bit sinister. And this is turning into quite a bit of a campaign. Um, Dave, you're a big Nintendo fan. Have you got any inklings as to what could be going on here and why Nintendo have decided to pull these games from the store? No, I, well, hopefully they just do a live stream and they take Mario around the back of you know, Nintendo HQ with a shotgun. Finish them off properly. That'd be quite cool. Shh, shh, sweet prince. <laughs> Finish him off properly. <laughs> no, I'm not sure why they decided to do this in particular with the um the 3D All Stars pack they brought out, which was yeah. I think it was was it Mario 3D? Which one was it? It was the one from the um the game from the 1064 Mario 64. Couldn't think right, of that for okay. some reason. Mario Sunshine and Mario Galaxy. They brought those out in a pack. And they said it was only going to be available for a limited time. Can't really see the point why. Oh. They usually leave these things up for ages for people to buy, but they decided to put a limit on this one. So whether they bring it back at some point, I don't know. But I can I can understand some of the older things being turned off, like the older Mario Maker, because yeah, yeah. the Wii stuff's pretty much dead now, isn't it? We've got Mario Maker 2 on the Switch. Yeah, people can move stuff across to that and carry on with yeah. that one. So I can understand the old service is getting shut off. I don't know why they bother putting a time limit on this particular game pack, but they decided to. Yeah. Do you, uh, Koo, do you think it's just a bit weird that they've not really fully explained this? Yeah, massively, because, like, again, the... Like, I, I think no matter what sort of, like, area of gaming you're into, we all have played and love Mario to a massive extent. and uh, uh, Like, it's... I don't know too much about what's going on. I haven't kept up in the loop with it. But um, it's 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 the lack of information is why it's a bit puzzling, if anything. Mm. And yeah, it, it, like I, I guess it's getting people worried, obviously. But yeah, as Dave said, there completely understand taking away the older stuff, like uh, the Wii is dead, and um, the games that kind of came around those times. Phew, like again you you catch some of the good ones and like even then are they still being played that sort of thing so um the games that came out prior obviously if you have those type of games they don't really need an online service like you're gonna have the hard copy of them as well so i don't see the issue but i can understand why it's 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 causing a little bit of disruption and everything yeah yeah we'll, we'll have to say whether there's gonna be a big announcement or not we We'll see. It's just it's funny how it started trending on Twitter. Yeah. And it was just some random person that did it. They just saw what was happening and went, oh, no. 
it's the day that Mario died. And it just went huge. You know, uh, it, it's it's a crazy thing. Social media, just like your TikTok that you wish you'd never done now. But there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, another interesting thing that happened uh, last week. Uh, obviously, normally this is the time of year where you get the South by Southwest uh, Music and Film Festival. Uh, and one thing I didn't actually know, I honestly didn't know, is I didn't know that they did the Gaming Awards as part mm. of that. Now, obviously, they've not been able to do the festival um, this year, but they did do the Gaming Awards online. And there was five games that won awards. Now, I thought I'd play a game with you guys. Uh, if you've done your research, which I only gave you about two, three hours to find out, um, you might guess what some of these are. But I'm going to read um, out five games that won the awards. And then I'm going to read the category, and you've got to guess which game won that. Okay? So the five games that won awards was Last of Us Part 2, Half-Life Alex, uh, Deep Rock Galactic, Hades, and Ori and the Will of the... Oh, yeah. Easy for me to say. Ori and the Will of the Wisp. Those are the five games that won awards. Okay? So that's Last of Us Part 2, Half-Life Alex, Deep Rock Galactic, Hades, and Ori and the Will of the Wisp. So... Which game, gents, and you can play it at home in the chat as well, which game do you think won uh, Best Excellence in Narrative? Last of Us. Okay. Ori. Who's saying Ori? Yeah. Anyone else in the chat want to have a guess? Which one was that? I'll let you have a think. Okay, I'll move on. I'm not going to give you the answers. I'm going to keep moving on, so you're not going uh, to know. Blue which... ball. Right, okay. <laughs> this one, I think, is a giveaway. Uh, Tune says Last of Us Part 2 as well. Okay, we'll see. Um, VR game of the year. <laughs> Alex. <laughs> Alex. Right, right. Alex. Oh, wait, no, wait, wait, wait. Deep Rock, I want to change. <laughs> no, <Alex. laughs> okay. Um, uh, best, uh, oh, um, excellence in score and music. Oh. Oh shit! Uh, I think what was left? There was uh, Deep Rock Galactic, Hades, uh, Ori, Will and the Wisp. We we know that Half Life Alex got VR game. Look, we'd be kidding ourselves. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And Last of, Last of Us Part Two. I'd have to go Last of Us for that one. Okay. Yeah, I'd guess that one as well because that was very good music. Yeah. In that one. So you don't think that Last of Us then got the best narrative then? Because Koo's, Koo's gone with Ori for narrative, and then that for oh, Mind you, I said Last of Us for narrative, didn't I? So yeah, so I guess it's different Ori. for this one. Oh, I'll, I'll go Ori for this one then. Okay, all right. To be okay. honest, both deserve either category. I think like uh, both scores for this one especially was fantastic yeah. anyway. Um, best multiplayer game? <laughs> Deep Rock. Okay. Yeah, Deep Rock. Yeah. Okay. I had to think that way. Did the others even have multiplayer? I know Ori had a multiplayer option, did it? No. Uh, I can't remember. I know Deep Rock does because we yeah. streamed it for a couple of weeks on the channel. Um, not going to lie. Didn't think much of it. It is what <laughs> yeah. it is, man. <laughs> then we gave up on it. We found it. We, but anyway. Um, mind you, it is in um, game preview. I mm. only found that out after we stopped streaming it. Um, so it's not the finished game, which is weird. And um, Game of the Year. And your choices were Last of Us Part 2, Half-Life Alex, Deep Rock Galactic, Hades, or Ori and the Will and the Wisp. I think Hades is the only one I haven't picked. Hades, I yeah. that one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so I could tell you, uh, exclusive in narrative was Last of Us Part 2. So, Dave, you got that one. Uh, VR Game of the Year, if you didn't get this one, by me. Uh, you, everyone got it. <laughs> Half-Life, Alex. Um, excellence in score was Ori and the Will yeah. of the Wisp. Uh, best multiplayer game was Deep Rock Galactic. And the game of the year went to Hades. Dave and got I a clean got... sweep. <laughs> Tunes has got... Tunes has pretty much got it. So there you go. And Dave, so there you go. Um, Don't so there you go. That was what won the South mm. by Southwest Gaming Awards last week. Um, it is. It is insane. Especially as... I can see why some of them won. Um, Hades wasn't very well reviewed when it came out. We had it on the we, we talked about it on the yeah. show. And it didn't get great reviews, but people love it. 
yeah so like, and, all, and like also it's it's a really new game as well to yeah. to be brought in and like actually voted in compared to the other games that have been out for a while it's like you think oh. about you there's two get to me there was only really two big games out last year that really sold well and did well and reviewed well and was loved by everyone and one was animal crossing and someone the other one was doom eternal yeah and that came out right on there are there were other games that come out last year but to me a lot of them, a lot of those games got those two games got overlooked in a lot of the awards over the last six months, which really surprised yeah. me. But eh, you know, like I, I, would, I, would, I would have loved for Doom Eternal to be in there for score. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm just saying, have. like, <laughs> should have. It just, oh, love it. Just sitting there, doing, 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 yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> it's great. I spend more time doing that than playing the actual game. That's why I die constantly. Yeah, you, you just be you're, like you're at the main menu and you're just constantly just going. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, it wasn't a phase mom <laughs> <laughs> oh dear um so there we go folks those are the games um our last game that we're going to talk about uh that came out um i gotta check the dates on this because i think this is out now but i'm not sure when it actually came out so I'm hopefully it's going to save my ass and tell me in the trailer this is also out on nintendo switch um Obviously, people are very familiar with uh, Monster Hunter. It came out on PS4 and PC, etc. Nintendo Switch gets a different version. It's not Monster Hunter World, but Monster Hunter Rise. So it's a completely new game. Uh, we are going to show the fairly lengthy trailer of this. So God help me if it balls is up. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we, we will uh, come back and let us know what you think of this after this trailer. Here we go. Oh, that's my pop. <laughs> just got an important letter. It looks like we've got a rampage on our hands. since the last calamity. That monster is known as Magnum Nalo. we go so there you go monster hunter rise and even before the, the trailer nearly say my ass tune says comes out friday and it does it comes out this friday on nintendo switch uh it says con looks so into this all this says in me how you doing mate How's it going? Oh, I know what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I played Monster Hunter World literally a couple of weeks ago on, on, on this channel. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. It wasn't a game that ever crossed my path and was like, oh, I want to play that. But I gave it a well for a couple of hours, enjoyed it. Um, might go back to it. Don't know. It's one of them. I could probably take it or leave it. 
Dave, I'll start with you. Monster Hunter World and Monster Hunter Games, are, are you familiar with it? And what do you think of this new version that's come out for the Switch? I'm familiar with them. I haven't played any of them before. I've looked at Monster Hunter World, but it looked like it's going to be a, a fairly lengthy game. I was already playing some you know, big stuff at the time, so it just kind of skipped straight past me. Mm. This, this one looks quite cool. Again, I don't think I'll get into it. Not what I'm looking to buy for the Switch. I was reading a review earlier, and it sounds like it's got rid of some of the like, early game grind that you used to get in some of the older Monster Hunters. You had to like, really build your character up. It sounds like you start with a decent, powerful character and can just progress from there. Yeah, so I, th- I think that sounds like a you know, good if you don't want all the you know, the grinding. You can just jump mm-hmm. straight in, have some fun. So yeah, sure it'll do well because I know it's a huge series, massively. Yeah, popular. yeah. Uh, Ku, want to have um, your other thing? So first things first, I'm a Rizu. Uh, just to give a bit of context there, I am a huge. I was a huge fan of Monster Hunter. Uh, it was one of the games that actually my cousin got me to play when I was really young. Cause, like the game is actually quite old, and uh, I don't know how we played it actually, but I remember he was just like, "You have to play this," um, <laughs> and uh, he was teaching me through it. So like I was when Monster Hunter came back out. Obviously, it was on the Xbox. He was on other consoles as well. Um, I can see the huge difference already in this game. Um, but yeah, one of the things that I think Dave kind of like touched on again brilliantly there is that from the looks of it i don't think we even get to create our character i think we're given a protagonist i don't think it's a creative one i think it's because from the looks of it like that was the first thing they did in the likes of the monster hunter that everyone's currently playing that they showcase the customization the changes you can be male female whatever with this one throughout the entire thing it was the same individual so i don't like obviously don't take my word for it but it kind of looks like we're actually given a protagonist and it would kind of suit the switch and the separation of the game that they could be going for a more story driven one. Monster Hunter is a grinding game. Yeah. In general, it's a it's a massively grinding game. It can get on your nerves. Um and yeah, like again, I I, I hope it's really good for the for the for the the young me who um who loved this game when I was really young. Um I hope it's it, it kind of brings back that old kind of feeling to it because from looking at that trailer, that's what I got from it. I, I It reminded me of the older variation of it, you know, uh, not, not being complicated with the whole customization and grinding, just kind of like do this, 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 this. Yeah. And maybe there's a bit of story with it, obviously. And obviously the customization will still be there. And uh, with a sense of equipment, I say that was a big pull for a lot of people, but um yeah, it actually looks kind of good. I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't mind uh, purchasing it if it wasn't on the Switch because I don't have that. <laughs> it is coming to PC, but not till next year, I believe. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'll get it then. I'll get it then, one hundred percent. I'm sure. I'm sure when it does come out on PC, we, we'll end up talking about it again and mm. see how it fares. Um, I can tell you. That, I mean, Dave hit the nail on the head. They've taken a lot of the grind out of the game. They said uh, a lot of the people that reviewed it said they took the grind out of it. Um, you can get around a lot quicker because they've now added a thing that you have got like a dog oh, that yeah. you can get on a ride and just basically travel a hell of a lot faster, which you can't do in Monster Hunter World. Um, the total game is about 50 hours long. So there's no end grind. Once you've done the main bulk of it, that's it. That's your game pretty much done until they add any new packs and stuff, which is going to be coming to the game. Um, and there is a new like tower defense game that they've added to it, which is a completely separate mode. You can play with your friends, which I've said is okay for a bit of difference, but after a while, you get the same monsters and it doesn't really grab your attention that much. So, based on all that, what do we think uh, it got review wise on average? Uh, again, have a guess in the chat if you want to. Uh, but, Ku, what do you reckon out of 10 this got? It's a very well received game. Has a huge cult following. I, I bought. I think it'd be a seven. Okay. Dave. I guess an eight, mate. Okay. Uh, Dave, you've hit the nail on the head yet again. Eight out of ten. Dave He's knows good. his stuff. He knows his stuff. <laughs> Damn. Damn. He gets it wrong. I don't know how. I don't know how. Um. So yeah, eight out of ten. That K, uh, is out this Friday, folks, on Nintendo Switch. Um, so before we go on to our last story, just to recap the four games, yes, only four. Normally we do about 12 in the show, but you know, slim pickings this week. 
Um, so you had Tomb Raider Definitive uh, Survivor Trilogy, which was out last Thursday on all the Xboxes and all the Playstations, got 8 out of 10. Um, Marvel's Avengers for PS5 and the new Xbox came out last Thursday, 7 out of 10. Uh, Story of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive Town on Switch came out last Thursday, 7 out of 10. And out this Friday, also on Switch, Monster Hunter Rise, which got an 8 out of 10. Now, our final news story uh, before we wrap up the show. Obviously, we were talking about the fact that um, about Square Enix uh, did their thing last week on the 18th of March, hence why both Tomb Raider and Marvels uh, came out. Um, so they talked about a couple of things. All I'm going to do is talk about a few things that they mentioned, and then I'm going to play three trailers from three very different games uh, that are coming out soon. Um, so obviously, we were talking everything Avengers. They did... Um, get um, a roadmap out to say, look, this is what we're going to try and do to make things better. We are bringing out DLCs. Hawkeye! <laughs> Which no one cheered for. Um, and as Dave quite rightly said earlier, it just seems a very long gap between stuff. The only thing that seems quite excellent is they're bringing in a Black Panther DLC. Um, I was going to play the trailer for that, but it's literally 20 seconds, so there's no point in playing it. Um, so we'll probably talk about that at some other point. But they've kind of said, look, we want to make this good. We want to make this a game that you're going to come back to, blah, blah, blah. They've done a roadmap. But um, the, the kind of the, the, the three big things, uh, obviously they also brought out the Tomb Raider edition, but the three big things, and I'm going to go with this first one. This is quite bizarre. I'm going to play the trailer for it, and then I'm going to talk about what it is. So I'm not going to say anything, but we'll just watch the trailer for this. And uh, I'll just bring this up. Here we go. And then you'll see what on earth this is all about. And it is coming out this year, apparently. So here we go. The lights are out in the night. I stand by your side. Because I don't see the light in your eyes. I feel the fire, 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 fire. There you go. So that, they basically, Square Enix, have bought the rights for Space Invaders to make an augmented reality game on your mobile. If you don't know what that is, just think of Pokemon Go, where everyone was running around looking for Pokemon, and it was on your screen on your phone. They are doing that with Space Invaders. So you could be standing in your town square, shooting aliens that are coming down from the sky. I thought that was quite an in interesting one. Uh, Dave Koo, any thoughts on this? It could be fun, couldn't it? Yeah. Just hold your phone up and you know, Space Invaders yeah. coming down over the town hall or Buckingham Palace, whatever. Try yeah. to save it. <laughs> Hopefully they'll add a bit more variety too. Hopefully it's just not the same thing over and over again, just slow back and forth. It'll get yeah. boring quite quick. I guess there'll be some like these high school modes, complete, complete with your friends and stuff like that. Yeah. Have to wait and see if the show a bit more. Because it didn't tell you bugger all in that, did it? No, it just showed a few... Yeah. It's I need to do what the game is going to be like. Yeah, they, they as need I say, more, need more info. Uh, yeah, it, we'll, we'll get a bit more information. It's due out this year, so I'm sure we'll find out. I would have thought if they want to get this going, um, considering most people aren't allowed out their houses at the moment, if we do get rid of this horrible virus and stuff, they'll probably aim for the summer. Uh, because I can't see many people running around at Christmas when it's bloody freezing doing this. Uh, so We'll see. Uh, Koo, your thoughts on this? I had no idea where that trailer was going, to be honest. And like, I was like, I was getting really into it. I was like, oh, Space Invaders, awesome. What are they going to do with it? And then I was like, oh, Pokemon Go. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I was like, but you know what? I think it'd be a good crack. Like, I can, yeah. I can see me and me mates doing that. Like, if, like, if I don't know about Pokemon Go, I'm going to do it with this. Like, because yeah. <laughs> obviously, um, I think it'd be a good bit of crack. Will it be massive? I don't I, you know. I have no idea. It could take over the world for all we know. Mm -hmm. But uh, because like, it's such an iconic game. Yeah. But um, yeah, I actually look forward to seeing what happens. When, like again, you said it yourself though, with the lockdown, 
they're going to have to keep waiting until this is all clear. Yeah. You know, but, um, and like you'd be looking for the summer straight away, 100%. Yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, and obviously, bearing in mind, I'm going to make a terrible joke now. The, the only sort of next wave that they want is the next wave of Space Invaders, not Corona. So there we go. That's what they're hoping for. <laughs> had to put that in. <laughs> yeah, why not? I had to kill another minute, so I thought I'd put a bad joke in. So there you go. Fair uh, um, one game that is coming out at the end of the month. Uh, and uh, again, uh, this has been much talked about. We talked about this game. Uh, I think this might have been the... the might have been the show with um, Gov and Hales, actually, when we went through, like, 400 new games coming out this year, or however many it was we went through. And yeah. one of those new games was um, Outriders. Now, this is literally coming out at the oh, end yeah. of the month. Uh, Square Enix uh, did another trailer for it. But obviously, as we know, um, Xbox and Microsoft have scored another deal because Outriders is coming straight to Game Pass on day of release. So that's just pissed off the PlayStation people. Um, but I'm going to play the trailer for it, and we'll have a chat about this game, which is quite uh, – people are really – I think they're chomping at the bit. This is probably going to be the first biggest game of this year, possibly. We'll have to see. Um, let's play the trailer for this and see what we think. Here we go. We awoke from one nightmare into another. Not on our dying earth, but somewhere much worse. Good guys are dead one. The good guys are one night things are fine. Good guys are dead one. We came to Enoch as our last chance, a chance at a new home. But what we found didn't save humanity, it consumed it. We awoke changed. The anomaly unleashed within us, burning with power. Impossible power. Enoch robs us of our humanity, yet gives us so much more. Each step taking us further from what we were, and closer to what we must become. So there we go. That was Outriders. Now, obviously, with that trailer, it said it was coming out uh, holiday 2020, but obviously the game got postponed. As we know, the uh, beta went out a couple of weeks ago. The people have been trying. Um, Ku, thoughts on this? Looking forward to it? Yeah, I, I hadn't heard of it whatsoever prior, but um, uh, like, look at that trailer and everything like that. I, I, uh, I think two get two games came to mind, which is really, really odd. Like uh, Gears of War. Yeah, kind of came to mind with the whole aesthetic, a different world, creatures on it. But then also for some reason, the the idea of the powers versus weaponry uh, prototype. I don't know if you remember that game. It's a um, yes. It's a it's it's a really old. Like it's not really old, but it's a three sixty game. And just the idea of uh, the I guess you could say really overpowered abilities versus creatures ver or um, like uh, military everything like that. But yeah, like it, it looks quite good. It looks entertaining. That's the biggest thing. I like yeah. um, the world that they've set again. 
from a trailer you can't really take you take that with a pinch of salt but um yeah i'm i'm gonna be looking into that a good bit i say yeah yeah dave you excited for this it's one i'll, I'll definitely take a look at i originally wasn't gonna bother because i thought at one time it looked like it was gonna be another live service game yeah and that's what everyone thought for a while but then no it turns out it's not they haven't got any of that in there. I think they were thinking about it, then just stuffed Ooh. it all off and they just made it, you know, you buy the game and you get the full thing in there. Yeah, that's cool. And since it's come to Game Pass as well, that's what's tempted me to take a look at it. Because yeah, I w- it wasn't going to be a game I was going to rush out and buy day one. Not at no. all. As it's popping on Game Pass, I'll have a look at it. I yeah. it probably might be one I'd, I'd play a bit of co-op with, with uh, one of my mates on a Sunday night. It's the sort of thing we'd, we'd have yeah. some good fun out of. I don't know if I'd play it just myself solo, but co-op game. Always looking for a good one of those. This might just sort of fill a nice gap we got. Nice, nice. I I will give it a go again. I uh, as time's gone on, I've got. Once I'm excited for this one, but I've got more interested in it because when it like before Christmas, I think when we we talked about it, I was like, eh, not fussed. But as time's gone on, I'm going okay. This might be one to watch out for. So again, it's coming on Game Pass. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll give it a whirl at some point, definitely. Um. The final game we're going to talk about. Now, this this has a massive following. Um, and they kind of announced two things with this game. Um, the first is the fact there is a new Life is Strange game coming out in September called Life is Strange True Colours. We're going to play the trailer. But they also announced that they are remastering, which also comes out in September, Life is Strange. And the uh, let me get it right now. I've probably forgotten the name of it. Life is Strange. Before the storm. Before the storm. Thank you. I wanted to say before the clouds, but I knew that wasn't right. <laughs> uh, before the storm, which is the game that kind of sits between the first one and the second one. That they are both getting a complete remaster and also coming out in September. But we have got a brand new Life is Strange game. We are going to show you the trailer for it. Uh, this trailer premiered literally last Thursday. Uh, so. If you've not seen it, this is hopefully a treat for you. Here we go. This is Life is Strange, True Colors. And then we'll be back right after this trailer. Peggy 16. When I moved to Haven Springs, I hadn't seen my brother Gabe in years. Alex! (laughs) It's just so good to see you again. Welcome to Haven. This place is pretty sweet. I'm glad you two met. Is this dude my best friend? And this dude hands me the best beers? <laughs> Alex, right? I'm Steph. I didn't realize... That we all knew you were coming. For the first time in years. Well, what do you think? I love it. I really let myself believe. Welcome home. I don't know what to believe now. Except Gabe is dead. This one's for you, Gabe. Hearing everyone talk about my brother, about the life he had here with all of you, I lost the chance to have that. What happened to Gabe was a senseless, tragic accident. It wasn't an accident. Son, now is not the time. Alex? Are you okay? No. They're definitely hiding something. What happened here? Haven's a community. We help each other. Alex, be careful. There's something you should know about me. I know what other people are feeling. I can see these auras around them. If they're angry or sad or afraid, I feel it too. When I focus, I can even understand why they're feeling it. And if somebody's feeling something big, it infects me and I lose control. I've never told anyone. But now I can find out what's really going on. You'll need help. I've got your back. It 
There you go. So Life is Strange, True Colours, coming out on September the 10th. Um, Square, uh, one thing I'll say about Square Enix is they are very good at keeping secrets because this didn't appear on any list for any of the games that were due to come out in 2021. And then they've just gone, boom, you got it in September. Um, Koo, have you played any of the other games? Are you excited for this one? Yeah, um, I didn't know that existed or it was coming out. Like, I am um, chuffed. Um, again, very story driven kind of game, very dramatic. Um, the, the games they had, so I'm automatically going to be looking into this a hell of a lot more to the point that I'll probably just end up buying it anyway. Um, yeah. that no matter what the reviews come out, and I'll criti critique it myself, but yeah, I'm massively excited. Uh, I don't think they've had a game in that fashion with the Life is Strange series that disappointed me in any manner. Right. You know, they've all had their own little clicks and own, own little kind of things going with the variations. Obviously, we had the first one uh, was obviously about, um, I forget the main character's name, but um, the town being a, being yeah. basically demolished and everything like that and then yeah. complete u-turn with the young kids and then with it like i i like what they're doing they're creating this universe of like completely different powers it's not the one thing like they're not keeping with this whole thing of like reverse time or anything like that like it's perfect and yeah i think the game itself is going to be really really cool especially because haven is a cult name that sounds like a cult city right there. But um yeah, that's I'm really excited for that. Damn. <laughs> I think that's gonna be cool. Dave, uh your thoughts on this? And have you again have you played these? Yeah, I've played um for original Life is Strange and Before the Storm. Love both of those. Brilliant stories too. Loved all the characters. Fantastic soundtracks to them as well. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. Haven't played the second one yet. I kind of missed that when it came out. It was on Game Pass. I should have jumped on it. It was on Game Pass. So I missed it. But this one, yeah, looking forward to it. It's not not going to be episodic either. It's just going to be you know, release and that's it, which is yeah, going to be a bit of a change one, with them. One huge mm. big game. I yeah, just one release, yeah. so no waiting months in between. Brilliant. Which, which I never like anyway. So yeah. I, I, came, I came to the originals late when everything was there already, so I could just play it straight away. Yeah. You don't have to wait. So this is cool for this one. Just buy it, play it through, see all the story. Mm. So, yes, yeah, so it looks cool in the trailer. Hopefully, it's got yeah. a good story to it because that's the main thing. Yeah. Good story. Hopefully, good characters as well. I think there'll be a lot of people that are excited for that. Um, mm -hmm. And that literally comes out in September. So, anyone who's missed out on the other games, they're remastering uh, the first two games, but not number two, if that makes sense. Trust me, still, it it's still relatively new that in yeah. that sense, you know, um, the second one, and also it's a it's a it's yeah. a, level a lot smaller. It was a smaller project with that one. It, they didn't, mm. it wasn't as big as the previous ones, so I don't think they kind of need to. It's a it's no. a nice side story. The second game is yeah, it's it's worth worth checking out. But yeah, mm. literally September the tenth. That's the day that that is coming out. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is it from us tonight. Uh, there's one thing we normally do. Uh, which I'm not going to do tonight. We normally try and end with either a clip or a movie clip that relates to a new game or something, or a funny video game thing. Um, considering it's been a really difficult week for games, uh, not so much for news, there's been plenty of news, it was really difficult for my, me to find anything. And so I've not actually found anything this week, mm. unfortunately. So what I'm going to do is, normally it's Dave and me that find uh, these clips. So I'm going to put it out to the audience. And I would like you to submit your ideas for the clip that will end the show. It can be a funny clip of a game, a game that you might think is going to be absolute garbage, or we've done movie clips for games that are related, just like the Mortal Kombat film that's coming out or the Monster Hunter <laughs> film that came out, um, you know, things like that. Um, we basically want to end the show with something like that. So I am setting the challenge. Uh, if you uh, join our Discord, we will uh, get you to suggest the clips and then – Dave and me will pick out the best ones and we will end the show uh, with that clip. If no one submits anything, and I guess it's just back to us to try and find something each week, but um, <laughs> uh, I know the one that we did last week was actually recommended to us by Discord because uh, he he was the one who tracked down the Keanu Reeves, Keanu Reeves buying his own figure. Uh, story oh, my God, week, yeah. Which, which, which actually just made me smile. I thought that was a great story. So there you go. I am laying down that challenge to our audience. Uh, find us some funny clip games. It can be anything. We've had everything from um, 
someone completing the first level of Hitman in 13 seconds uh, because there's a way to do it. Um, we, we showed that on here. We've had all sorts of stuff. Uh, and the fact they were bringing Doom into Fall Guys and stuff, so all crazy oh, stuff. Yeah. Uh, submit submit your things, and then we will give you a shout-out uh, on the on the show uh, for being the person that wins for that week. Um, a big thank you to our guest this week, uh, Crusaders Coup. Please do go check out his channel on Twitch if you haven't oh, already. Yeah. <laughs> um, go give him a follow. Uh, go watch him. Uh, what's, what's your next couple of streams coming up? Oh, God. Uh, well, Sims, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, that's starting on Friday. Now, uh, I'm streaming tomorrow, to, uh, tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, and they're going to be finishing off Amnesia, the, the Dark Descent, the first one. Wanted to revisit that, hit the horror roots. Uh, and then I'm going to be hitting, again, one of the more popular games I play is Dead by Daylight. Nice. Uh, Survivor and Killer in that stream. And then Unfortunately, Sims. Yeah, you know. yeah. <laughs> well, someone's got to play. <laughs> yeah, someone's got to do. It. I'll be one. I li- like. I bet you yeah. no one's playing that on Twitch. There's no way that could be streamed on Twitch. There's no uh, way. I, did, I know I, you did. I did. I did. I did a stream of it, and I then got a follow from a lady in America called Heron Yeager Games, who constantly streams Sims. And she makes funny little videos out, which are really cool, I do have to say. We've raided her a couple of times. Um, but she makes cool little... So she makes a family, does all the things, and then condenses it down into like a 20-minute, like you're watching a TV episode of a TV yeah. show. Um, so there are people that stream it. But uh, so you might pick up some new followers off the back of it. Oh, so. God, no. They're going to be so disappointed in me and what I play, anything else <laughs> except that. Like They're going to be so disappointed. And I don't think... Do you know what? That if if I do get any new viewers from that, they're gonna be hating me, because I'm <laughs> literally just gonna be like, "What's the point?" <laughs> <laughs> like that's gonna be my like I'm, I, I've challenged um, the the missus to actually watch it, and because it's probably one of the only streams she's gonna watch because it's her favorite right. goddamn game, and I'm gonna be like, uh, pick out the one phrase I'm going to say, and I've already written it down on a a piece of paper. I'm not going to say it just, no, she's asleep actually. Yeah. Um, and I've said the thing I've, the one line I'm going to keep saying over and over again is what the fuck is this? Just constantly. What the fuck is this? (laughs) It's just going to happen. I don't, I don't know. Maybe do you never, you're like, I could change my mind after this 10 part bloody series. (laughs) But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's 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 me. <laughs> well, to find out if Ku makes it through the first episode, check out his channel on Friday. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for being our guest. Um, thank you to everyone in the chat, uh, everyone who's either raided or followed or cheered. Thank you so much uh, for being here. We will be back next week with more TNGC, uh, more new games. Uh, hopefully, a lot more games than this week. Uh, and all the latest news stories from the last seven days. Uh, so that is it from us. Uh, that leaves us to say good night. Thank you to Dave, as always. No problem, mate. Pleasure as always. Awesome. And thank you to Koo. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we shall see you soon. You take care. Thank you very much. Good night.